Well, good morning, everyone, and a very warm welcome to you this morning for our service of virtual communion on this Bible Sunday. And uh, a warm welcome to you wherever you're joining us from, from your own homes in different places. Uh, my name is Reverend Joanne, and I'm the, uh, many of you will know, but I'm the assistant priest in our United Benefit of St. Stephen's and St. James in Blackburn. And it's wonderful to welcome you on this Sunday when we it is uh, celebrated as Bible Sunday. Well, of course, every Sunday is Bible Sunday as we hear and receive God's word, both through our scripture and in our liturgy and allow it to transform our lives. But uh, this is the Sunday in which we especially remember it. So let's take a moment just at the beginning of our service to remind ourselves that we come into the presence of the awesome and living God. I hope you'll be able to follow in the words of the service, which I distributed previously on the Facebook page. Um, but if not, some of the words will come up on screen and just let it wash over you and bless your soul this morning. The Lord be with you and also with you. A verse from our reading that we will hear later in the epistle to the Colossians. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. Teach and admonish one another in all wisdom and with gratitude in your hearts, sing songs, hymns and spiritual songs to God. So with those words echoing in our mind, we turn to our first hymn this morning. Thanks to God whose word has spoken. <laughs> And indeed, we do praise God that he has spoken right through our history and is still speaking today. And yet, at the beginning of this service, we need to draw to mind that we don't always listen, deliberately or unintentionally, to God's word for our lives. And we have gone our own way. 
And so that we can fully hear his word, we come now to a time of confession to set ourselves right with God. The word of God is living and active. It judges the thoughts and intentions of the heart. All is open and laid before the eyes of him to whom we give account. We confess our sins in penitence and faith. Lord God, your word convicts us. All have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Your word commands us. Repent and believe the good news. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Your word assures us. Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. So may the God of all love bring us back to himself, forgive you your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness and assure us of your eternal love in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. We just take a moment to know that we are forgiven and restored. And so may our ears and our hearts be fully open to receiving God's word afresh this day. Having received God's forgiveness, we can declare his praise in the words of the Gloria. Glory to God in the highest and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. And so we turn to our collect, the special prayer for today, and we pray together, saying, Blessed Lord, who caused all holy scriptures to be written for our learning, help us so to hear them, to read, mark, learn and inwardly digest them, that through patience and the comfort of your holy word, we may embrace and forever hold fast to the hope of everlasting life, which you have given us in our Saviour Jesus Christ, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and for ever. Amen. And so we now turn to our scripture readings, praying that our hearts our, and our ears and our minds would be open to God's transforming word. We hear now the psalm appointed for the day, read to us by Bill. The reading is from Psalm 119, verses 9 to 16. How can young people keep their way pure? by guarding it according to your word. With my whole heart I seek you. Do not let me stray from your commandments. I treasure your word in my heart so that I may not sin against you. Blessed are you, O Lord. Teach me your statutes. With my lips I declare all the ordinances of your mouth. I delight in the way of your decrees as much as in all riches. 
I will meditate on your precepts and fix my eyes on your ways. I will delight in your statutes. I will not forget your word. Here ends the reading. Thank you, Bill. We're going to hear our epistle reading now from Dawn. The sound quality isn't that great on this, so you might just want to turn your volume up on your screen at the moment, just before we hear it. The New Testament reading is from the letter to the Colosseums, chapter 3, beginning at verse 12. As God's chosen ones, holy and beloved, clothe yourselves with compassion, kindness, humility, meekness and patience. Bear with one another. And if anyone has a complaint against another, forgive each other, just as the Lord has forgiven you. So you also must forgive. Above all, clothe yourselves with love which binds everything together in perfect harmony. And let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, to which indeed you were called in the one body. And be thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. Teach and admonish one another in all wisdom, and with gratitude in your hearts, sing psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs to God. And whatever you do, in word or deed, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. Here ends the reading. Thank you, Dawn. And now we turn to our Gospel reading. Alleluia, alleluia. Your words are spirit, Lord, and they are life. Alleluia, Alleluia. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Jesus said to his disciples, The sign of the Son of Man will appear in heaven, and then all of the tribes of the earth will mourn, and they will see the Son of Man coming on the clouds of heaven with power and great glory and he will send out his angels with a loud trumpet, and they will gather his elect from the four winds, from one end of heaven to the other. From the fig tree, learn its lesson. As soon as its branches become tender and puts forth its leaves, you know that summer is near. So also, when you see all these things, you know that he is near at the very gates. Truly, I tell you, this generation will not pass away until all these things have taken place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Now, for our reflection today, we're going to hear some words that I recorded earlier in the week whilst I was reflecting on the passage that Dawn read us from the book of Colossians. Hello. Well, I'm sitting in my study today with some of the Bibles that we have in our house. Some of these have special significance. That white one is my confirmation Bible. That one there is my granddad's confirmation Bible, dated 1910. The little one at the top is a New Testament given to my husband's uncle in 1920. And he probably took it to the wall with him in his top pocket. I've got a Bible down there that was very special to me as a teenager that I took away to university with me. I have my everyday study Bible, some very modern translations. Right at the bottom, probably you can't see that, is John's family Bible with loads of beautiful illustrations in it. And today is Bible Sunday. 
the Bible is often referred to as God's word. In fact, it was a collection of books written at different points in history by people in different circumstances, but which together reveal to us the nature and purposes of God. I'm really struck by a verse that I have known by rote since my teenage years, a verse from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The grass withers and the flower fades, but the word of our Lord will stand for ever. And so whatever the changing circumstances of our lives, wherever we live or in whatever time, whatever those things may be, God's purposes and promises will always be relevant, meaningful and true. In our epistle this morning, Paul is writing to the believers at Colossae. He urges his readers to let the word of God dwell in you richly. Well, that assumes that we know what the word of God is. And firstly, to know God's purposes and his promises for humanity, that's his word as revealed in the Bible, we need to read it and understand it. That requires us to open it, to read it, to meditate on it, to study it, to discuss it. That helps us know it and understand it for teaching and growing in the wisdom and knowledge of God, as Paul puts it. The writer of our psalm this morning had a deep desire to know God and seek him earnestly with his whole heart. It says in verse 16, I will meditate on your commandments and contemplate your ways. My delight shall be in your statutes and I will not forget your word. I wonder sometimes if we share the same desire that the psalmist has. Many of you are diligent in reading your Bibles, daily even, and studying it. But sadly, there are places where the Bible remains on a bookshelf, gathering dust. And that in itself is a travesty. Where are there are people around the world hungry to get hold of a scripture in their own language and those who risk life and limb doing so. The Bible is our spiritual daily bread on which we can be fed, nourished and strengthened. And as we pray, give us this day our daily bread. God has indeed placed the bread of his word into our hands. Paul talks to his listeners about being transformed into the likeness of Christ, putting off our old clothes as it were and putting on new garments now they've become followers of Jesus. He tells them that they are to clothe themselves in compassion, kindness, humility, meekness, patience, forbearance, forgiveness. Gosh, that's a list of challenges, isn't it? but above all, in love. These are nothing less than the character and nature of God, and we can know that God who is revealed to us in Scripture. Our transformation is a journey that begins with our baptism as we turn to Christ, as we leave our old selves behind and start out as followers of Jesus. White robes or new garments are often a symbol worn at baptism of the new spiritual clothing we will acquire in following Jesus. And part of that journey that we start out with at baptism is getting to know God through his written word. That's perhaps why Bibles are such an appropriate gift at a baptism. But the very nature of God doesn't remain distant, set only in words of ink on the paper. The word became alive when God came to earth in human form as Jesus Christ. 
as the introduction to John's Gospel puts it so eloquently. The Word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we have seen his glory. Jesus is the living Word, the one who existed before time even began, who was there at the beginning when creation was spoken into existence, and the one whom the purposes and promise of God are revealed. In him, scripture has come to life. In him too, the promises of hope, forgiveness, reconciliation with God, of justice and of peace and mercy are fulfilled. Fulfilled in his death and resurrection. This is all recorded in the Bible from the, the eyewitness accounts set out in our Gospel. And as St Luke writes at the beginning of his Gospel, they are written so that we might know the truth. On this Bible Sunday, my prayer is that through the reading of our Bibles, we would know more of God's truth revealed to each one of us in Christ Jesus and that in the power of the Spirit we would be transformed into his likeness as his followers in the place where he has called us to be. We are to be his witnesses, we are to tell others about him. The best thing you can do is put a copy of the scriptures into somebody's hands who have never heard them and tell them what you know of Jesus. But all this begins with opening and reading the book for ourselves. Amen. And so now we turn to affirm our faith in the living God. Let us declare our faith in God. We believe in God the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named. We believe in God the Son, who lives in our hearts through faith and fills us with his love. We believe in God the Holy Spirit, who strengthens us with power from on high. We believe in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. And so now we turn to God in prayer for our time of intercessions, which will be led by John. The response today is, after I say, Lord, hear us, if you can, respond with, Lord, graciously hear us. Let us pray. Gracious God, counsel and all wisdom, we pray for all Christian people, for our bishops and our vicars, and for all who preach and guard the faith. Let us give thanks to the people. And pray for all who enable it to be studied, understood, and loved. May the word of Christ dwell richly in our hearts and knit us together in the bond of your love. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear us. We pray for the leaders of the nations and for those in authority over them. Give them the gift of your wisdom and the knowledge of your word, and our right discernment in all things. 
Lord, hear us. Lord, hear us. As we continue this pandemic, continue to make our prayer requests. We pray for our town and community of Birmingham. Those who live and work and visit here, and for all who seek the common good, Keep your word of peace in our midst and help us to serve one another as Christ has served us. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear us. We pray for those who do not believe and for those who are hesitant to believe. Open their ears and their eyes and open their hearts to receive you, the very word of life. Lord, Lord, we pray for all known to us who are ill. Whether it be grief, fear, sadness, or loneliness. May Christ, your living word, bring comfort and healing to them. We give thanks for those who have died in the faith of Christ. Remember the families and friends of Brenda Mallinson. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Finally, Lord, gracious Lord, grant to us the power that loving your holy word, we may be obedient to it. We ask that this day we be enriched by the word of your God. And show its love to the people who may come in contact this week. Amen. Thank you, John, for leading us in prayer. And we turn now to our time of peace. Let the word of God dwell in you richly. Let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts. So may the peace of the Lord be always with you and also with you. And so from our own homes and in virtual ways, we share God's peace with one another. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. I'm sharing with my household member here who sends his greetings of peace too. And so now as we prepare for our time of virtual communion, I prepare the table. present Lord Jesus and make yourself known in the place where you are. We pray together. Lord Jesus, you nourish us at the table of your word and the table of your sacrament. As we feed on you the bread of life, may we daily grow into your likeness. Amen. The Lord is here. His spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise.
Father, you made the world and you love your creation. You gave your Son, Jesus Christ, to be our Saviour. His dying and rising have set us free from sin and death. And now we give you thanks because you have given us the Holy Scriptures to instruct us in the wisdom that leads to salvation through faith in Jesus Christ. And so we gladly thank you with angels and archangels and saints, praising you and saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We praise and bless you, loving Father, through Jesus Christ our Lord. As we obey his command, send your Holy Spirit, that broken bread and wine outpoured may be for us the body and blood of your dear Son. On the night before he died, he had supper with his friends, and taking bread, he praised you. He broke the bread and gave it to them, saying, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When supper was ended, he took the cup of wine. Again, he praised you and gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. So, Father, we remember all that Jesus did. In him we plead with confidence the sacrifice made once for all upon the cross, bringing before you the bread of life and the cup of salvation. We proclaim his death and resurrection until he comes in glory. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ is risen, Christ Christ will come again. Lord of all life, help us to work together for that day when your kingdom comes and justice and mercy will be seen in all the earth. Look with favour on your people, gather us in your loving arms and bring us with St James and St Stephen's and all the saints to feast at your table in heaven. Through Christ, and with Christ and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory are yours, O loving Father, for ever and ever. Amen. So we're going to join in the words of the prayer that Jesus taught us in whichever version or language you feel most comfortable with. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. As we break the bread, 
to remind us of Jesus' body broken, we say. Every time we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Jesus, Lamb of God, have mercy on us. Jesus, Father of our sins, have mercy on us. Jesus, Redeemer of the world, grant us peace. And as we cannot partake physically, we partake spiritually in the bread and wine of our communion. We say together, thanks be to you, Lord Jesus Christ, for all the benefits you have given me, for all the pains and insults you have borne for me. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, I ask you to come spiritually into my heart. O most merciful Redeemer, friend and brother, may I know you more clearly, love you more dearly, and follow you more nearly, day by day. Amen. As we feast spiritually on the bread and wine of our communion, we can reflect with some music. Having feasted and been nourished, restored, refreshed and strengthened, we turn to our post-communion prayer. We say together, God of all grace, your Son Jesus Christ fed the hungry with the bread of his life and the word of his kingdom. Renew your people with heavenly grace and in all our weakness, 
sustain us by your true and living bread, who is alive and reigns now and forever. Amen. And so now we turn to our final hymn, the beautiful words recorded, the Song of Mary in the Magnificat, Tell Out My Soul, the Greatness of the Lord. <laughs> Well, just before we turn to our final prayer of blessing, I want to thank you for joining in with me, with me this morning in our worship. And I hope that uh, it's been, God has spoken to you through it and you've heard and received his word. And I hope that it will be a blessing to you in the week ahead, wherever you find yourself. Just one or two notices. Um, there'll be no coffee and chat after our service this morning, which normally takes place online via Zoom. And that's because we're having one of our annual parish church meetings this morning, straight away afterwards. And there'll be similarly, there'll be no uh, coffee and chat via Zoom next week either, because it'll be the APCM of the other parish. But you can join in midweek with some of our events with Reverend Sarah leading midweek worship online on our Facebook page at 10 o'clock on Wednesday. Um, she streamed a service for the National Church of England last week. And if you've not had a chance to look at that yet, I thoroughly recommend that you do so, because I think you'll find it very uplifting. If you've been celebrating anything this last week, whether it be a birthday, an anniversary, a special family occasion, our joy and our blessings are with you as we join in your celebrations. And so now we turn to our final prayer of blessing. Go now in peace, knowing that you have been born again, not of perishable seed, but of imperishable, through the living and enduring word of God. And the blessing of God Almighty, 
Father, Son and Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you and those that you love this day and always. Amen. So go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. Thank you and enjoy the rest of your day.